Hello, we're back. Smoke and Mirrors Radio Hour. I'm Sharon Rose, sitting in for Jay Widener. We're here this evening with dancer, philosopher, scholar, mother, <laughs> Kimmer Lamotte. And we were just beginning to speak about this issue that was brought up in, in 2006 when we began, uh, actually it was before that, we began work on the film 2012, The Odyssey. Uh, I was speaking with uh, shaman healer Alberto Violdo about the nature of the times we live in and uh, our view of reality that has been imposed upon us. He called it the cultural trance when I spoke with Jose Arguez. Uh, he called it a dream spell. And uh, Rian Eisler, in our film Time Wave 2013, she spoke of it as the dominator trance. It appears to me that this trance that has been imposed upon us in the modern age has thrown us into these mental realms that have alienated us from our physical bodies and particularly cut us off from an intimate relationship to the earth. I know, Kimmer, you speak about these issues very strongly in your book. Yes, I do. I think that's a great way of thinking about it and characterizing it. And indeed, I feel like uh, because of the cultural education, the education of our senses, the sensory education we get when we learn to think and to feel and to act as if we were these minds living in body, that we are increasingly vulnerable to these images of these virtual worlds that addict us to the kinds of pleasures they represent as pleasurable. And I think what ends up happening is that we, the, the, they, they addict us in particular ways. I mean, let's take an example here so we, we can get it a little bit concrete. In, in, in What a Body Knows, one of the desires I talk about is our desire for food. And I talk about it in the context of the obesity epidemic that we hear about all the time. And if we look at the discussion over that obesity, obesity epidemic, we can see how it polarizes into two sides. And on one side, you have people who say, we need to find the right diet and we need more willpower and we need to impose this diet upon our bodily selves and then we'll find the right body and the pleasure that we're seeking in our relationship to food. And on the other side, you have people who say, no, willpower is not enough. We need some kind of pill. We need some kind of surgery. We need some kind of external force, some kind of public policy to legislate our food options for us and that will then provide us with the control of our bodies that we need. So on both sides of this issue, you have this mind-over-body thinking that if we could have the right diet or the right pill or the right kind of control of our bodies, then we would be able to find the satisfaction we're seeking from our desire. But once, what ends up happening is we end up becoming more and more addicted to this idea that something outside of ourselves is going to be able to provide us with the satisfaction we seek. So, for example, we go on a diet, the diet doesn't work, but we don't call into question the fact that a diet may never work. We just look for the right diet, the better diet, the next diet that's going to help us along. And I think this is one of the ways that the diets work to addict us to the idea of the diet so we'll keep being lost in this sort of cultural trance, as it were, trying to get the satisfaction we seek, trying to do the right life-enabling thing, and constantly making choices that aren't aligning with our good health. Well, this seems to me to be connected with the cult of consumerism, uh, consuming yes. as the word, yes. so that we're completely out of balance. Yes. I think that's and, it, yeah. And I, and I also feel that this has something to do with uh, John Lash, the Gnostic scholar, he would call it the Messiah complex. I might call it the Guru complex, yes. where we we are constantly looking for someone outside of ourselves right. to to tell us what to do, to give us the right answer, rather than really understanding that we have within us the innate knowledge. If we go deep enough and really sit in our hearts, that yes. we really do know what we want. Yes. I think that's completely right. And I think part of what we've lost in our culture is a rhythm, a rhythm of looking out 
and then looking in. In some ways, I don't think it's inherently bad to look outside of ourselves for information and for resources, for understanding, for stories, to learn from other people's experience. But there's a problem when we stay focused outside all the time, and there's a problem when we learn to distrust our inside in favor of what we can see and what comes to us from outside. So if we're always relying on the thermometer to tell us what our temperature is, we lose the ability to discern our own temperature. And if we're constantly relying outside of ourselves, looking for that Messiah, looking for that right belief, that right practice, that right pill that's going to fix our problems, we lose the ability to fix and heal ourselves. And so part of what I want to encourage people to do is to remember that rhythm, right? To remember that they need to turn outside, but they also need to turn inside. They need to bend their knees. They need to go and breathe. They need to remember that they themselves, that, that the power that anything that they hear or see or come across in their lives has is resides in them, that it's not, uh, I'm saying this in a little bit of a complicated way, but for example, if you come across some belief that strikes you as so true, that that's not because the, the truth is inherent in that belief itself, but it's because when you hear that truth, when that belief, When you move with that belief, it opens up something inside of yourself that you know, and it becomes true for you. And that's where the power lies, not in the belief itself, but in the relationship, in the movement that it invites you to make, that enables you to discover something about yourself that you didn't always otherwise know. One of of the issues I see that's in our world right now, where... You know, we're really looking for new ideas and new solutions and uh, these words change and hope. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I think that uh, we, you brought up the, the word rhythm. Yes. And I think we have been alienated from the rhythms of nature. And I know that's something that you and your family are very much in touch with. And so I'd like you to speak a little about how nature itself has informed your life? Yes. I think for me, it was always my experience of being in nature that made me want to dance. When I would find myself in the mountains or on the beach or in a big field or in the forest, that was, those were the times where I felt more, most called, most impelled to move. And as I moved and felt that feeling of movement through me, it would always deepen in my experience of where I was, of the place in which I was. And this was always sort of curious to me, and I wanted to explore it. And I think I'll need to wait for a moment. Is that true? That's right. We'll be back. (laughs) All right. Smoke and Mirrors, continuing our discussion with Kimmer Lamotte. 